Today I'm joined by FX strategist Ankita Dudani from RBS in London. Hi Ankita, so last time you spoke to Duke's Copy TV, you were discussing your projections for one of the traders' favourite currency pairs, the Euro dollar. Have you adjusted your forecast at all in light of recent events and developments out of Europe or not? So basically, we had the uh, we had the EU summit, which has failed to soothe market uh, market tension when we had it last week. And despite only being a couple of days old, cracks are already showing in the uh, in the treaty agreement at the summit. So um, we this has led us to revive a euro dollar forecast um, on the downside. We're looking for uh, we're looking for for it to head towards uh, one one twenty six by the end of first quarter next year. Um, Q1 will, is something we expect to be heavily dominated by negative news out of the out of the eurozone. These will be uh, obviously it will be difficult for the different states to push through the treaty changes through their parliament, and uh, there's there's not been any significant uh, role of the IMF or the ECB. We all obviously we're going to have lots of uh, lots of chat around rating downgrade, and the ECB continues to be cautious. So all of them is going to play quite negatively for the for for for, for, for euro against uh, against or other crosses in the first uh, in the first half of next year, and um, we are, we are obviously in, on the growth side as well. The data is not shaping up well. We've had the ECB cut rates by uh, by 50 basis point already this quarter, and we expect them to continue to do so. So the ECB cutting rate is going to take further support out of euro and euro uh, and euro crosses. And uh, as I said, we look for euro dollar downside in the first half of the year, going towards 126. But that said, we don't think it's going to break meaningful, meaningfully below 125. And in the later half of next year is when we look for U.S. Um, U.S. Uh, fiscal and U.S. growth story to come back into focus, and we look for uh, look for a re reverse in euro dollar downside by then. What about dollar CAD? Are you still expecting this pair to trade in the same range as previously forecast? Um, dollar CAD, we not a huge uh, huge change from our forecast from when I spoke to you guys last. It's still uh, we still expect it to uh, strengthen in the near term, going below parity over the next three to six months, and uh, that's to do with the fact that both U.S. and Canadian data recently have done quite well and especially when you look at them in comparison with the European data so there's there's, uh, there's a sort of a relative uh, relative growth story that's working more in favor of North American countries versus the European countries and um, given that the U Canadian economy is heavily reliant on the US economy the the uh, positive outcome of US data which was evident even by today's day today's um, manufacturing um, empire manufacturing and initial job jobless claim data is supportive of the of, uh, of the Canadian economy and the Canadian dollar. Um, another factor which we think will limit the upside in the Canadian dollar is the prospect of slowing reverse uh, reserve accumulation by Asian Asian central banks. And if the, if, the, if they slow down the reserve accumulation, the pace of their recycling of dollar reserves into other currencies such as the CAD and Aussie and other commodity currencies will be reduced. Finally then, Ankita, let's move on to a pair we haven't discussed before, the pound dollar. Where do you see the cable going in the short, mid, and long term. Um, in the sh in the short term, we look for uh, some downside in cable in line with euro dollar, but uh, we expect the downside in cable to be uh, limited than compared to euro dollar, which leaves us looking for euro sterling to continue to go down in a straight line over the next 12 months. Um, euro sterling, we think it's heading towards 82.50, 82 area over the next nine to 12 months. So some downside in cable is expected, but not as much as we expect in euro dollar. Um, there was a lot of um, there was. There was some focus over the last week or week or ten days on how the outcome of the summit is not. I mean, it's not going to be great for the UK uh, for the UK economy and sterling as um, as investors worry about political tension and for the uh, for UK's ability to compete on its own. But and obviously, given the uh, UK's close trade and financial linkages with the eurozone, any further deterioration in the European outlook, which we discussed on our outlook for euro dollar in terms of uh, growth slowdown, the eurozone entering a recession, and um, uh, and, and just uh, the leading indicator struggling from those countries is not going to be supportive for the UK economy either. So, um, I mean, cable is expected to uh, expected to fall in the near term, but with a limited, uh, the pace will be limited. And in terms, in in the longer term, we think 160 in cable is is a fair value. Thank you very much, Ankita. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. For this week's final edition of Targets and Focus, I'll be speaking to Wells Fargo. So stay tuned to Duke's Copy TV.